The man suddenly realized something was wrong. There is a suspected gas leak in the building next to him. He took a running leap and jumped into the door and ran out with a pet dog in his arms. The building behind him explodes. He was confronted by an anxious and worried woman. When the woman saw the dog in her arms, she looked grateful. She looks at the man in front of her with admiration. I just live by the ABCs. Adventurous, brave, creative. With another explosion behind him, the man comes to his senses. What he had just seen was just a fantasy. The man's name is Leo, an ordinary office worker in his 40s. His co-workers all think he's strange. His only pleasure is to daydream. In his fantasy world, Leo is a superhero. He once saved his pet dog in the second before the explosion. He went on a solo expedition to Antarctica. He can't also move in an instant. In this daydream world, there is a regular heroine, her new colleague Lucy. Lucy and Leo work in the same magazine, the main promotion of a magazine called Life. Leo is in charge of the magazine's negatives. One day Leo received an email. It's from Mark, a famous photographer. Mark told him here's film number 25. Is the most satisfactory of all his photographs. It's the essence of life. And with the film came a wallet for Leo to thank him for all he's done over the years. It was printed with the motto of Life magazine. Know the world, overcome obstacles. To know all, stay close to life. Finding true love, feeling each other. That's what life is all about. Leo opened the roll of film, only to find that there's nothing where film 25 was. Before Leo could react, his colleague called him to a meeting and asked him to bring film number 25 with him. Leo could only go to the meeting first. There was a new leader in the company. On the first day of the meeting, he announced that the company had been acquired. Some of the employees will be laid off. Due to the network, Life magazine will also be discontinued. This month's issue is the last one. Mark, the famous photographer, to use film number 25 for the cover, the new head of the organization, is excited and asks Leo to take out the film. Let everyone see it. Leo made up an excuse that the film was still being processed. After the meeting, Leo went back to the printing room. But no matter what he did, he couldn't find film number 25. Leo could only look for clues in other photos. He tried to contact Mark, the photographer. Lucy was in the photographer's account department. He told Leo, Mark traveled all over the world. No one knew where he was. Leo had a habit. Every time he got the negatives, he likes to sit in front of the square, facing the sunlight. With a small magnifying glass to look at the film, Leo realized there was a ship in the photo. Lucy found out that the ship was from Greenland. She jokingly said, encourage Leo to go straight to Greenland to solve the mystery and find the film. Leo didn't answer. He'd been playing by the rules for too long. He'd only dared to take chances in his fantasies. But just now, this seemingly dull and an interesting man was showing off his skateboarding skills in front of men. When Leo returned to the office, he met his boss Bob in the elevator. Bob accused Leo of not completing such an important task as the cover. But he was still playing with his toys. Leo couldn't stand it anymore. They fought over the toys in the elevator and broke out of the elevator window, fell to the road. Then they used umbrellas as support, as if skiing and chasing in the road. Bob tapped Leo on the head with his index finger. He woke up Leo, who was in a fantasy world, but the real Leo, he was still a man who couldn't let go of his anger. Bob has asked that the next time he sees him to see a process picture. Bob laughed at him and left. Leo went back to his office. He looked at Mark's picture on the wall. He felt like Mark was calling to him. It was his last cover anyway, thinking about those adventurous dreams and Lucy's encouragement. Leo was so excited, he went straight to the airport. He boarded a plane to Greenland. Greenland is so picturesque, it's breathtaking. Leo got off the plane and rented a red car. He went to the address where the mail was sent. He met the owner of the phone in one of the photos. Mike said he delivered the mail by helicopter. He had some business to attend to later, and he could take him to the boat to look for it. Mark was talking and gulping down beer. Leo was a little stiff. He looked out the window. There's a lot of dark clouds in the sky. There's probably gonna be a big storm. And Mike had just finished a big bottle of wine. Leo turned down Mike's offer. He was worried about what to do next. Lucy appeared behind him with her guitar, guiding him out of the bar. Leo made a beeline for the helicopter that was taking off. No more retreating. He jumped into the helicopter with a single bound. He was shocked at his own courage. Looking at the scenery around him, a legendary journey awaits him. The helicopter staggers closer to the ship. Leo asked Mike how to land it. Mike said to him, you can just jump off. Leo was going crazy. Leo jumped towards the ship. He jumped into the sea. Mike was referring to the lifeboat. The water in Greenland was freezing cold, and there were sharks around. In the nick of time, the lifeguard rescued Leo. Leo pinched the lifeguard's face. He wondered if he was dreaming, but it was all real. Life had been more exciting, was more than he could ever dream of. Before Leo could recover, 
he was sorry to hear from the captain that Mark had just left the ship for hours ago to shoot a volcano in Iceland. Leo Saturday there frowning. It was hard to get this far. It would be a shame not to find Mark. Luckily, he was able to find it. He found Mark's shooting plan on the greaseproof paper wrapped around the cake. He rode his bike and set off on his way to Iceland. Iceland is a wonderland. The lakes are like mirrors, reflecting the blue sky and white clouds. The mountains are soaring, riding along the mountain roads. Leo felt a long pent-up urge. He was not satisfied with riding a bicycle. He traded a toy for a skateboard from a boy. Leo put his feet on a skateboard. He felt like he was free again, finally becoming the fearless, adventurous, the one who craved adventure. The world was wide open. It was as if Leo was the only one. He arrived at the bottom of the volcano before he could inquire about Mark's whereabouts. He was told that the volcano was about to erupt. Leo was caught in the wind. He looked up and saw a glider heading toward the volcano, and there's a man standing on top of it who was filming the eruption. Leo knew it was Mark. He was struck by Mark's free spirit of adventure. There was no time for emotion. A kind driver picked up Leo and took him on a run. The black mist from the eruption was about to engulf them. Leo escaped with his life. His Saturday helplessly in a restaurant. He passed by Mark again, and he was devastated. He called Lucy, tells him what he's been through. On a piece of paper with a shooting schedule, there were a few words he didn't understand. Lucy told him where they referred to, but he didn't know what the connection was. Leo had to give up. Back at the office, just walked to the editorial building. Bob saw Leo and gave him a scolding. After scolding him, he told Leo that you were fired. Leo called out to him for the first time. More than a million, way more negatives have come through my office. I've never mislaid one. But Bob still didn't take him seriously. He still didn't have the courage to face Lucy. Leo walked into the house tired, pulled out the wallet Mark had given him. He looked at the motto of Life magazine on it. He smiled bitterly, threw the wallet into the trash can. He felt that he would never have any contact with Mark again. Sitting on the sofa, Leo looked at Mark's latest photo. He was surprised to find that the photo was of his piano at home. His mother calmly told him Mark had just come to his house a week ago to see him. From his mother, Leo found out about Mark's latest trip and that Mark thought he was the most understanding partner. Leo packed his bags. He decided to go on a mission to find Mark. He took a car to the foothills of the Himalayas. He kept a diary and asked for directions and gave away his mom's cake. He trekked up a mountain and ate leaves, pitched a tent and camped by the river. He climbed the Himalayas in the snow. He actually found Mark, who was photographing snow leopards. Leo took a deep breath. He tried to stay calm and explain to Mark why he was here. Asked him where the film number 25 was, but Mark smiled. He told him that the film number 25 was in his wallet. That photo was my gift to you. The wallet was just for the negatives. I wanted to surprise him. The note said to look inside. Leo's mind was a little confused. He misunderstood the note, and he'd already thrown the wallet away. He was a little angry. He felt he had been tricked. Before Leo could say anything, Mark grabbed him and showed him the snow leopard through the camera. It was Leo's first time to see snow leopards up close. The beauty of their snow leopards. Leo asked Mark why he wasn't filming. If I like a moment, I don't like to have the distraction of the camera. I just want to stay. Leo listened to Mark's words. He thought about it back in the city where he lives. Leo was surprised to find Mom had thrown away his wallet. He pulled out film number 25. Without opening it, went straight into the editorial building and dumped the negative on Bob. Said he had two days to make the cover. Leo walked out of the office building. He met Lucy. He found the courage to confess his love to Lucy. He told him about his strange daydreams and all the adventures he's had during this period of time, inviting him to go to the movies with him. Lucy was happy to oblige. The last issue of Life magazine was released. Surprisingly, Leo was on the cover. It says, the final issue is dedicated to the man who made this magazine possible. Mark admired Leo's hard work. This photo is Mark's best work. It's also the best gift for Leo. Don't stick to the rules of life. Go out of your way to feel like you're really alive.